The United Democratic Movement is hosting its 26th anniversary in Umtata tomorrow. The party has, was formed by General Bantu Holomisa and Rolf Meyer, who has since resigned from the party. News from Africa is that Sipo said to Boy joins us live in Umtata. Sipo, good to speak to you this evening. Just uh, give us an idea of how things are looking and what we can expect this weekend. Well, good evening to you, Hugo, and we are outside the Walter Susulu University here in Umtata. And, of course, if I could just step out of shot for you, just to give you a bit of background in terms of what's currently happening now. You do see some members of the UDM as the stage is being set up and, of course, getting ready for the big anniversary celebration of 26 years tomorrow that will be taking place here in Umtata. And, of course, we did see uh, the General Ubandu Olomisa was also also here uh, just to check on the proceedings and how things are currently uh, are as far as the preparations are concerned. We also do know that there will be performances um, from some of the Eastern Cape leading artists like Betusi Lemtinga, uh, Buto Vutela, Yolanda Vutela, Zintlek Waiman, just to name a few. But I'm joined now by the UDM President, uh, Ngaba Yom Zikwangwadot. Thank you very much for making time to speak to us this evening. 26 years um, celebrating the UDM. Speak to us about what tomorrow means to you as the Deputy President of the UDM. Well, when you're introducing me there, you said UDM President, I'm still Deputy. Well, it's 26 years of constitutionalism, of nation building. It's 26 years of making a, a tangible contribution towards the consolidation of our democracy in our country. It's been 26 years of making sure that we contribute to the fight against corruption in the country, making sure that there's clean governance. Many would recall many of the contributions of the UDM in the past, uh, uh, making sure that we do away with pro crossing legislation, making sure during the second ballot application when most people thought that we were not going to be able to win that victory for our country, which we did, even on this matter now when it comes to party commission and many other issues that we've dealt with. I mean, in Parliament, many continue to say that we punch above our weight. I beg to differ. In Parliament, we actually provide leadership on a, on a number of issues because we are guided by the values of the UDM as we lead and make interventions in Parliament. We, we do so without fear or favor. And, uh, and I'm sure you'll see that many political parties understand that we are always guided by principle. We are not aligning ourselves with any faction of any political party. We are always guided by principle. So, we are going to continue to do that in our country. We are going to continue to unearth young talent uh, that will continue to occupy strategic positions in the party and in our society. Uh, you know, for example, there are quite a number of young people who are playing leadership roles, firstly in the party and elsewhere in government. One of the few parties that has, I think, the youngest SG in the country's history. Uh, we had a young mayor at Nelson Bay, Mandela Bay Metro not so long ago, Luke Colonamete, when he was acting. We have chief whips who are in their early 30s in the different councils around the country. Show me any political party that is able to do that, and I will show you the UDM. And also, now, we do speak of the Eastern Cape uh, province, in particular here in Umtata, that the UDM has a very strong number of people that support the party, nationally as well, but most importantly here in the Eastern Cape. We've seen that numbers dwindle over the years as far as voters are concerned. What's the plan of action moving forward and just throwing forward to 2019 elections for the UDM? Well, starting as I think one of the major contributing factors was the floor crossing legislation when the ANC literally stole our seats, Baziba in Kosa, stole our seats, right? They took away our seats, and that obviously le caused us to have a huge dent in our budget, the financial resources. But we're recovering now, which is why we're doing the 26th anniversary, trying to use the resources properly to consolidate and rebuild our base in the Eastern Cape and if possible also try to grow elsewhere in the country. But our focus going to 2024 will be to rebuild and, and consolidate our base because without our base there will be no UDM in 2024. I can't not mention the fact that the Eastern Cape Province has seen a number of young women committing suicide. Um, issues of mental health and, of course, poverty in the province, unemployment, you name it. I'm speaking about the Eastern Cape in particular because we're here. 2019 elections have come and passed 2024 looking forward to those young people who are now watching the news and uh, are wondering what could the UDM bring that's different to the other political parties that are there. Why should we choose um, the UDM or rather why should we uh, watch TV tomorrow and listen to the uh, president of the UDM speak to us? Why the UDM? 
Why the UDM? Firstly, the president of the party will be recounting our history, taking us back uh, down the memory lane, counting everything that we've achieved so far. But more importantly, his speech tomorrow will serve as a precursor to the 2024 elections and our manifesto launch, if you like. So he's going to give us a preview. And naturally, because the event is taking place in the Eastern Cape, which is unapologetically our stronghold, the president is going to delve deep into the issues that affect young people, issues of mental health, resource allocation, and whether or not uh, the manner in which the government of uh, the Western Eastern Cape rather, is doing justice to those issues and whether or not there are initiatives that we can put in place in order to try and deal with issues of unemployment in the province. The, the infrastructure which is dilapidated and collapsing in the country. I mean, if you are in the Eastern Cape and then you have to go to other provinces like the Western Cape, you feel like you are in some far flung and very poor African country where you're here. And then when you go to the Western Cape and some parts of Gauteng, you feel like you're in Europe. And yet we have... Uh, the most beautiful province in the country, I mean, from a natural point of view, natural beauty point of view. And that's uh, speaking on that as well. Um, I can't also not ask the question of what could uh, be, you know, implemented, what measures could be implemented should uh, the UDM take leadership in this province in particular. I mean, we speak of the issues of infrastructure, we speak of the issues of un youth unemployment. We visited Coffee Bay just a day ago and we were speaking to young people there who say that jobs are scarce. They are uh, at a very beautiful, um, you know, uh, town of I I I Linduga, I I I Coffee Bay, yet tourists go there. They have no skills as far as making sure that they're easily accessible to growing the economy of the Eastern Cape. They're poor. What could be the implementing measures? Uh, there are some, but they're not implemented. What's the plan of action to implement those plans that need to go to the people of the Eastern Cape province? The first thing we must do is to get rid of the ANC government. Because remember, we can't implement their programs. We have to implement our own program of action and implement our own manifesto, which will try... Uh, one of the things we always consistently talk about is how do you begin the process of reviving and reigniting growth in some of the most rural municipalities and rural provinces around the country. The economic hubs that used to provide jobs to our people here in Dimbaza and elsewhere in Butterworth and all over the, the province, that is not happening. We've been speaking about uh, introducing tax incentive schemes in order to make sure that people are able to come to rural provinces and actually station factories and farms and produce instead of us being consumers in this province. That's the only way you are going to be able to deal with issues of unemployment because then you need to address inequality by creating jobs instead of giving people handouts because handouts are unsustainable but you need to empower people so that they are able to actually take care of themselves. Last question, the issue of coalitions. I see uh, that uh, it's going to be a thing. Many metros in the Eastern Cape province, I'll speak of Abeja in specific, there's a lot of instability. If the UDM were to go into uh, a coalition agreement with certain parties, which parties would those be and also why? We, we have not entered into a discussion where we make particular preferences in so far as political parties are concerned. I mean, you hear the Democratic Alliance singing out of tune, talking about uh, thresholds and trying to legislate more smaller parties out of existence. And the ANC is walking directly into that trap because all that the DA wants to do really is to say, demonize the EFF, get the smaller parties out of the equation which then will pave way for the DA to have a coalition government with the ANC. In fact, we'll be delighted if we can do that because they'll self-destruct within a period of six months. So we're going to consider which political parties have programs that speak to the UDM values, that seek to serve our people of South Africa and to address issues of service delivery. If those speak to us and our mandate, we are going to enter into a coalition government with any political party that espouses our values. But if you talk nonsense, you must go elsewhere. We don't have time for you. Deputy President, thank you very much uh, for making time to speak to us here on Newsroom Africa. Hugo, the gates will open at 7 a.m. in the morning tomorrow here at the Walter Sisulu University in Umtata.